Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Todd Coons. I'm glad that you're here. Thank you so much for watching. As you know, we do all things photography here, and today I'm in the photo studio, which is one of my favorite places to be. I love doing product photography, but I have to admit to you, it is a beautiful day outside, and the swimming pool is calling my name, so I'm going to have to fight off the urge to go out there and kick back and relax and stay in the studio, get this job done, which shouldn't be too hard because we've got a fun shoot today. Hey! Okay, so let me give you a little bit of a backstory how we got to today's shoot. Several weeks ago, I was photographing a wedding. I was second shooting a wedding for a wonderful couple, Tim and Elizabeth. Now, typically when I work with Courtney and I second shoot for her, she'll go off with the girls before the ceremony and I'll go off with the guys and we'll do all that getting ready stuff separately. Well, in this particular case, I started at Tim's house. That's where him and the guys were getting ready. And in the process of doing all those wedding photographs, um, we got to talking about what he does for a living. And one of the things that he does is he makes fishing lures. And he's got a great passion for fishing and for making lures and that whole lifestyle. Uh, and I could tell that he was very passionate about it, so I was super impressed by that. But it dawned on me, you know, maybe I could approach him and see if he would let me photograph the products that he makes. And when I approached him with that, he was excited about it and so we've kind of for the last few weeks kind of been putting the whole thing together he's given me five of his fishing lures that he makes and he's kind of explained to me what they do and how they work and and so today's photo shoot is going to be producing images for Prosser Bates that's the name of his company and you know I'll put all the links and all the descriptions and all that kind of stuff so you can see what he does but the purpose of today's photo shoot is to produce images that Tim can use for advertising purposes whether it be his website or social media or even print if that's what he ended up doing with them but the goal is to produce pretty pictures that he can use now because Tim didn't come to me and say hey I'd like to hire you to photograph my product Things are a little bit different than they would be if a client came to you. So I'm doing things a little bit backwards, if that makes a little bit of sense. Typically, if a client came to you and said, hey, we would like you to photograph our product, they would have some sort of shot list. Since I approached him, he was like, yeah, here, here's a bunch of things. What I'm doing is I'm creating a shot list. So I have a shot list going into today's shoot so I know these are the things I want to accomplish. These are the things I need to check off the list in order to, to do and complete this job. So in this case, I've got five lures. Let me show you a couple of them right here. They're distinctly different, but very similar. So we're going to do five shots, one of each on white. That would be a very e-commerce website kind of looking shot of each item. Then we're going to do a nice live background, you know, a little more styled pretty shot of each one and then I'm going to do a group shot of all five at the end so that's 11 shots in total shouldn't be too difficult once we get started we'll kind of rattle through them now, something else I want to share with you guys is when it comes to product photography the perfect lens is a big deal now I have rented the Fuji 80 millimeter macro lens I've never used this lens until this weekend I started playing with it yesterday it's a very interesting lens I'm I interested in purchasing this lens. This is actually on my list of things to get. So renting it and playing with it will kind of determine whether I want to do that or not. It's it's a little bit of a big lens, but it should be a perfect focal length and perfect for product work. It, it should be ideal for what we're doing here today, but I wanted to kind of point that out. That's what I'm using in here today. And the last thing before we get started, I've got to admit to you guys, my studio is an absolute wreck. I, it's just messy so I've got to clean up a little bit and then we'll get started with what I think is going to be a lot of fun uh, this is a shoot I've been looking forward to for a couple of weeks now and uh, it's finally here so uh, let's get at it okay so before I talk about how I set up the white scene let me tell you really quickly why I'm liking this 80 millimeter macro lens um, typically what I shoot with around here is the 16 to 80 lens that came with my X-T4 80 millimeters is the same millimeters as what this lens is, but this is a macro lens. Now, a lot of people will think a macro lens means you gotta just take close-up photographs. I could do this shot with my 16 to 80. I'm not any closer than what that lens will focus, 
But one of the neat things about a macro lens is the way it's engineered, and you're just gonna have to look this up for yourself because I can't explain it specifically. But a macro lens is engineered to be sharp corner to corner where a lot of lenses will kind of fall off in focus out towards the edges. A macro lens is designed to be uh, sharp all the way across. Uh, you know, if you're doing tight in photographs or you're doing uh, like copying documents, that kind of thing, a, a macro lens would be designed to do that. And it needs to be sharp edge to edge. So for product photography, it's fantastic in that regard. Plus a macro lens just is one of the sharpest lenses you can purchase overall. So for product photography, where we're trying to show detail, we're trying to show sharpness, it's ideal. So let me show you my setup. I've got uh, obviously Godox AD100 as I do often in this little soft box. I've got it as close as I possibly can. You can see it's just sandwiched right in there. So that softbox becomes a very large light source as my main. I've got two mirrors adding some fill light to the front of the product. And on the background, I've got a white seamless setup, which I almost don't know that I need because I'm kind of not shooting off the horizon um, like I thought I would be. But I've got two V1s lighting up my background, which will also reflect onto my shiny white surface to help it go white. I ended up turning this V1 around rather than pointing right at the background. It's now pointing at my subject. And I've got a grid in there. I don't know. The barn doors are on there just in case I need to keep it from hitting anywhere that I don't want it. And with this setup, I end up getting a nice clean product shot on a nice clean white background. Let me show you where we're at here. There we go. I am at f22, ISO is at 250, and I'm shooting at f22 because I want it to be sharp front to back. This is just a nice clean product shot to show what it is, it needs to be sharp front to back, and now that we've got that one shot, we just need to rattle through all five of them, and we will have the on white portion of what I'm trying to accomplish. I have no problem admitting to you guys that one of the reasons I do the white first is because the white is the more boring of the shots, obviously. We're gonna do some more creative live set stuff now. We're gonna prop it, we're gonna make these pretty. So get the less exciting shots done first so that we can now get creative and do the pretty stuff. Uh, but of course the on white, I think, as far as advertising and, and what uh, Tim could do with these images is super important because you know, my time at Cabela's, they were really big on, you know, hunters and fishers. They want to know the product that they're using and how they're going to use it and what it looks like and all the little details. All that's super important. Tim was telling me the very front part of each one of these lures is shaped differently because it does a different thing. So these shots were important in order to show that. But now we're going to get to the more exciting shots. I've changed up my lighting for this live set. Let me show you real quick. Here's what I mean by a live set. We're on wood, we've got some props, we've got the product itself. Um, one of my tricks in the studio is to do glasses, to have the light shine through it, add some shadows and stuff. When I got a big softbox type diffused light source, it doesn't do as much as it would be if the light was more specular. But I've got the glasses in there kind of doing some shading got the scrim, I've got the softbox going through the scrim. My thinking behind that is I want the scene to look as if it was being lit by a garage window. Like you were making these lures in an old garage or something and the light coming through the window is what is illuminating. Now, I've only got the one light. The lights in the background right now are turned off. Not like me to just have one light, but let me show you what this uh, looks like. That's the image right there. 
and it looks a little lighter as I'm filming it than it does on my screen to my eye so it's a little moodier there but I'm not hating that one light that's that's not usually my style normally I've got some kind of accent light going let me come around here and show you again just because I'm kind of bewildered myself softbox through the scrim I do have a mirror bouncing into the front of the product but I'm kind of liking that so now I'm gonna do five shots very similar to this I'm gonna change up the propping a little bit so they don't all look exactly the same they've all kind of got their own little unique look even though they're very similar and we'll do these five shots and yeah again kind of bewildered I'm kind of hesitant here because I've only done one light and like I said, that's that's not how I normally do things. Okay guys, I just took a quick break and uh, sometimes you gotta walk away a little bit, but uh, I took a quick break, got to thinking about it and couldn't help myself. I have added a second light, adding a little bit of warmth. And if you notice, let's see, again, kind of hard to tell here, I think, but in that top right corner, you get a little bit of warm light. So again, garage window, as the main, maybe some kind of tungsten light in the garage that's on, doing that warm. I think it just gives it a little separation. It's very subtle, but I think it's better. All right, let's run with all four of them. Like I said, I'll change up the props a little bit, make them all look kind of unique, but very similar, so they'll go together, and we'll bang through the next few shots. <music> Right, five shots on white, five shots on a live background. Now we're going to do one more shot. I'm going to do like a group shot of all five, kind of like we'll call it the hero shot. And then I think we'll call it good. But I'm really excited about these shots. They're cool. It's, it's a fun product to shoot. Uh, and I think they're neat. They're different enough that they stand alone, but they go together at the same time. So hopefully uh, a lot of potential for advertising for Tim as well as, you know, just kind of showing off what I can do as a photographer. But let's do a big group shot and uh, finish this up. Okay, final setup on the uh, big hero shot, if you will. Um, all five baits propped. Still going with the soft box and the big scrim. Still going with the orange backlight. I've got the glasses in front of it. Um, as you can see, I've got some cards up over there on the left, shadowing some things from the right side because the light was getting a little bit hot. But let me uh, let me get the modeling lights going so you can see see what the uh, glasses are doing to the light over there. There's my two cards and a uh, couple mirrors on this side bouncing some light in. Pretty simple. Pretty straightforward. I had to uh, up the power of the flash and I had to bring the ISO up a little bit because one of the things that I needed to do, as you can see the ISO is at 640, I wanted to shoot at f16. I was shooting everything at 5.6 before, but in order to hold depth of field from front to back without doing any focus stacking or anything like that, um, I had to up the ISO and the power of the flashes, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. I think it will hold at 640 very nicely, and yeah, we should be good. All right, guys, there you have it. Another photo shoot in the studio, and this one was a lot of fun. I had a really good time creating these images. Big thanks, 
big, big shout out to Tim at Prosser Baits. Thank you, sir, for letting me photograph your fishing lures. It was an honor to photograph your wedding and it was a great privilege to do this today. I hope you like the images and I hope there's something that you can use. I had a really good time with it. And uh, yeah, I think the photographs turned out really, really well. If you've got comments or questions, let me know in the comment section. All of Tim's information will be down there as well. If you're into fishing, he's a guy to know here in South Carolina for sure. I'm not a fishing expert, but I can tell you that Tim knows what he's talking about. He's passionate about it, and he is a good guy to get to know and uh, look up what he does. So all that information, again, is in the description. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Give me a thumbs up if you would, too, and I will see you guys in the next video. I've got one last thing I've got to do. This photo shoot has gotten me fired up to go fishing. I'm not an expert fisherman, but I do enjoy doing it, and Tim knows the lake that happens to be right down the street from my house. He gave me a few pointers, some tips. Try this. He said you should be able to catch a fish. So we're going to go give that a shot, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.